Hey everyone, Charlie here from the Atomic Age, and I just saw Oppenheimer the other day, and it was great. Let me just say, it was great. It's definitely going to be up there with one of my favorite Nolan films I've seen. Not the biggest fan of Nolan, uh, his movies can be hit or miss, not to say they're not well made, but Oppenheimer was really good. The movie is three hours, I believe actually over three hours, but it flew by. The pacing was phenomenal. There really wasn't any downtime or any uh, boring moments, it just kept moving. So many famous faces. We got Oppenheimer, of course, Einstein, uh, Jack Quaid makes an appearance as Richard Feynman. We get Edward Teller, who's the, I guess you could say, the father of the H-bomb. Klaus Fuchs, who was the spy, gave away this uh, atomic secrets to the Soviets. Enrico Fermi, of course. Leo Szilard was in there, too. A uh, lot, bunch of different people, but a lot of them don't get a lot of attention, which is fine. It's a big movie. Leo Szilard might be on screen for, like, 20 seconds total or something like that. Very, very little amount of the film. Some characters I wish had a bit more development. I wish the relationship between Oppenheimer and his wife had a bit more time. But it was a jam-packed movie. Good to see a bunch of different scientists. And every single actor you've ever heard of is in this movie. <laughs> there are so many actors in this movie, but it's all great. It's good. Good stuff. There was also music the entire time. <laughs> it kind of ramps up in intensity as the, the movie goes along there, but... There were some scenes where he wanted the, where I may have wanted the music to be a little quieter or not there at all. And it wasn't bad music, but it was just, it was there a lot. And so, sometimes it was actually a bit too loud to hear what was going on, what was, what was being said. The movie is non-linear, so it, ba it bounces around with the, uh, the kind of the linchpin story about Oppenheimer, and then interspersing that with uh, how the Manhattan Project got started, some some earlier Oppenheimer stuff. So it bounces around, which I thought was actually. Pretty interesting. Kept it. I think that had to do a, a good bit with how how uh, how good the pacing felt. I would be interested to see it linearly. I don't know if that'll that'll probably never be a thing, but I'd be curious just to see what I think of the movie in the current form with the non-linear uh, versus a more linear edit. The movie did a very good job of the 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 language of cinema of showing and not telling when it came to how Oppenheimer's wife felt about his husband's affairs how Oppenheimer felt after they had learned that Japan had been bombed and he was giving a rousing speech to to everyone at, at Los Alamos. You know, he's saying one thing, but in his mind he's imagining uh, very vivid and disturbing visuals of, you know, the flash of the atom bomb going off where he is and people's skin being burned and, and such like that. So really good show not tell about how people are feeling and very visceral. Uh, it's almost like... Pretty much how I would imagine myself feeling those kinds of feelings. The film was also very even-handed. Uh, it's it's very uh, even-handed is not even the right word. There is no hand in this. It really just presents uh, how how things were with Oppenheimer, how how just how his life went. The movie wasn't making judgments for you or telling you how to feel. It was just kind of laying it out there, and it wasn't trying to jam any kind of. Uh, any kind of weird conclusions down your throat, or any conclusions at all for that matter. It really just kind of laid it out, but in a, a way that was interesting though. Sometimes that can be kind of dry, but it was it was not dry at all. So it was, that aspect was very well done as well. And you know, after seeing the movie, I realized I can relate a lot to Oppenheimer. I'm a, I consider myself a very open-minded person, willing to change my view of things in light of new evidence. So to see him have to struggle with the politics was felt very relatable to me. I feel like I would be similar in such situations. So uh, that may not be true for most people who see the film, but I, I was able to relate to Oppenheimer very well. All right, so that's how I felt about the movie in general. Let's get into some of the technical stuff. I'm going to kind of glance over some of this stuff because in a few months time with uh, friends of the channel, Real History, we're going to be doing a thorough breakdown of this movie. So to save the more in-depth discussions for them. But for now, let's glance over some of the technical. And there's a decent bit to talk about. But on the whole, the movie is about Oppenheimer the man. It is not about building the atomic bomb. Uh, that is incidental to the story. It only plays a role insofar as that was a part of Oppenheimer's life, basically. Uh, it doesn't focus on it. It only focuses on it because that is part of what made Oppenheimer who he was, or these experiences of building the bomb. So the trailer had some really crazy looking fireball. Two shots showing the fireball. There was the rope effect shot, and then there's the one where the fireball hits the ground. Unless I missed it, these were not in the final cut of the movie. They probably got cut out because the bomb scene in the movie was very good. 
I'll get to that in just a second. But I think they were going to say, I think they were thinking it was going to be too self-indulgent or that the tone of showing those shots wouldn't match with what was going on in the in the final fireball scene or the final Trinity test scene that they put into the film. So I'm fine with that. We finally found out what those marbles in the sphere meant and it meant how much material they need to be able to make a bomb. So the uranium, the uranium sphere is a lot bigger than the plutonium sphere and that basically plutonium is just more efficient when it comes to uh, splitting atoms and chain reactions than uranium. This all makes plutonium have a smaller critical mass than uranium. They did indeed go see the Chicago pile like in the in the trailer, but the scene was about as long as it was in the trailer, both walking over Chicago field and seeing Chicago pile. It really didn't serve much of a purpose in the movie. Uh, I'm wondering if certain parts of it got cut out relating to a uh, discussion I'll get to later in the video. So try to remember to tie that back to what I'm talking about now, but it was cool to see the Chicago pile. Definitely cool to see that, which if you don't know is the the world's first sustained chain reaction, and it used natural uranium bricks and graphite bricks stacked together to get a chain reaction. So the significance of a graphite chain reaction I'll bring up later when we talk about heavy water. The nuclear explosion sequence was great. Uh, I probably don't even need to bring this up in the technical aspect of the video, to be honest, but it was a very raw scene. If you'll remember from Fat Man and Little Boy, once the bomb goes off, he goes all like... <laughs> Sorry about that. It goes all leaf blower in the mouth, and then you hear the, the bang maybe like two or three seconds after the flash goes off. In the movie, they keep it, if not completely technically accurate, much more so in terms of speed of sound. So it takes like maybe a good minute for the bang to finally hit Oppenheimer and such. And it's a very, uh, it matches up with what I've heard people describe atomic bomb explosion sounding like which is just a very loud bang basically so it was really just a very loud bang but it wasn't like a bombastic typical cinematic like fat man and little boy it didn't sound like that it was just a bang the emotions and how the the sound of that scene played out very good scene once the uh once everyone hears the bang that's when everyone starts celebrating which is i was glad to see that that they actually celebrated and it wasn't like a hindsight is 2020 somber kind of thing so glad to see everyone celebrating that their atomic bomb worked because that's that's what people would have done i would have celebrated it's like oh we got it yeah so when oppenheimer and einstein are talking about the atmosphere exploding and there's another part where oppenheimer's talking to uh, one of his students or grad students or something uh, they're both talking about how they don't like doing the math and uh, they want someone else to do the math which i thought was very nice to include. I think the advisors on the film must have been theoretical physicists and not mathematicians because <laughs> there were several jabs at mathematicians. Movies like this tend to condense a bunch of different roles into one and can give people a false impression of how uh, scientists and engineers work together, how they're uh, huge teams of people with different specialities. Okay, and so the final bit I want to mention is that uh, Niels Bohr finally escapes uh, occupied Europe to get to America, comes to see Oppenheimer and co, and tells them that the Germans were using heavy water to work on their atomic bomb at, uh, to the jubilation of all the scientists because they've realized that Germany made the wrong choice. It's not that heavy water just can't make plutonium. The issue is that heavy water is hard to make. All the water you drink has some amount of heavy water in it, but it's a very tiny amount. So you have to concentrate it. Very analogous to enriching uranium. You know, it's, you're trying to concentrate a rare part of a larger material. So the Germans went with heavy water because it had previously been shown that graphite, you could not get a chain reaction with natural graphite, which is true. American scientists found out that if you purify graphite, uh, you can in fact get a chain reaction with graphite. So this is why it was so significant to see Chicago pile because not only was it the world's first sustained chain reaction, it was done with graphite, which was thought to the Germans to not be possible, which is why they had gone after heavy water and then subsequently abandoned their efforts to make a bomb because it was too hard to get enough heavy water uh, for a reactor. So I'm really looking forward to meeting up with Jared Frederick of Real History to get his insights into the historical breakdown. I think he's going to have a bit more to talk about than I will, but I think it's going to be good nonetheless. Really can't wait for that. It's going to be great. Please go check out his channel, check out some of his work. In the meantime, lots of great stuff there. See if you can see it in IMAX if you can. It was definitely worth it. 
I wanted to see it in a full bore IMAX, but it was really sold out for quite a while. So I settled for, you know, just like normal IMAX, but it was still great. I'd never been to IMAX before, so the screen was enormous. And then the movie theater I was in, I think this is true of like most, if not all IMAX, but there's like some kind of like sheets seat shaker or something when like really uh, heavy bass moments are happening in the movie. So that was it was a really cool experience. All right, guys, so there you go. My thoughts on Oppenheimer. It was a great film. I actually can't wait to see it again. I highly recommend you guys go see it. I give it a thumbs up. Great movie. I'll see you guys next time.